Guys, welcome back to part two of the Henry Offensive ebook. Yesterday, hope I can upload this the day after, I did the video on the tight slots HP week from Henry's run to his second belt this year, fourth belt within the last five, I think, which is insane. And he didn't use the bunch offset at all, which is why I didn't include it in the first part. But because this is bunch, I like running bunch. I have to make a video on this. The reason why this bunch is so good is, well, just look at the place. PA read inside zone split, which is a great run. Double post this year is not great. Not going to include in this one uh, because the post does not beat man coverage, sadly enough. Bunch trail we have, which is rare for a bunch of offsets. Z spot, dig return, flood, curl flat also, bench pivot, where it's HP under, mesh post. I mean, you see all the plays are there. First of all, let's set our audibles. We're going to have spacing switch we're going to exchange that for bunch trail and instead of pa read we want mesh spot those are going to be the plays that we want we have one run play in there just so that we can run the ball whenever we feel like it and where it's hp under i want to remind you of the abilities that we have I, i'm going to pull out my ebook which i read i've got written down it's going to be in the link below you can get it for free 100 just so you have it all there in front of you this is just the tight slots hp week and we're going to extend it and also put the bunch stuff in here uh, but in terms of abilities, we have Tom Brady with Gunslinger, Fearless, and Hot Rod Master. It broke all this down in yesterday's video. Uh, tight end, we got Taysom Hill with zero short, uh, zero AP short in Elite. CD Lamb uh, with short in Elite and short out Elite for a total of two AP. Plaxico Burris with short in Elite for one AP. And Herman Moore has got short in Elite and short out Elite for uh, three AP. The reason why we want short out Elite is i'm gonna go into words hp under i'm gonna call it main coverage let's just say that your opponent presses i've got debo samuel but he also has short out lead for me so i'm gonna press i'm just gonna max protect to make sure i get time and you see how why did that ability not light up that's weird let's try that again it's for some reason did not light up usually when you press and you've got a vertical stemming rod actually let's just put him on a streak this should work now yes you see how he lights up he gets the step and that's basically, that takes uh, man press out of the equation entirely. If you actually want uh, me to, I can show you that this also works on a post route. This is something that will make a post route get open actually, which is one of the rarer things you'll see this year. I'll come out in flood and I will press. I'll just make sure that we don't have a middle third there so we don't get uh, confused because of that. You see how we light up, we light up, we get a step and oops, I wanted to uh, throw the ball. We got bumped into sadly, but you see, whenever we light up like this, uh, this just beats press main coverage, for example. I'm just going to put him on the post now to really make sure uh, that I can kind of show you how this gets open. I also have short in lead on Samuel, which means that if even if we don't get pressed, let's say we don't get pressed this time, I still will be able to hit Devo Samuel on this post route. So that is why you want both there. You want to have the ability to beat uh, backed off man coverage where they're not pressing and also have the ability to get a one f uh, free one play touchdown if they press so let's now talk about how to beat all the coverage uh, the coverages out of bunch of us the first thing that i want to talk about is how do we beat match coverage because there are a lot of ways that we can beat match coverage i'm going to come out inverts and on defense i'm just going to call uh cover four quarters so one of the things that we used to do, or a lot of people still do, including myself, I still sometimes do this, is just streak the outside receiver out of the bunch. And this should be a one play touchdown. The reason for that not being as good in my opinion is because it is really inconsistent. If the tight end gets bumped for long enough uh, and he doesn't get into his route quickly enough, that's right there, you see this should work. But if he gets bumped, then it's not gonna work. It's not the most consistent thing in the world. So there is a better way of doing this. You can do this out of any play. If you have Hot Rod Master, uh, which I recommend, it's kind of a must at this point. What you do is you put your uh, tight end on a crossing rod. You're going to streak R1 and put Smith Sr. on a corner rod. Now you're going to snap the ball and you see that R1 is going to be wide open across the middle of the field. It actually played pretty well right there. Actually, the outside zone kind of recognized th uh, the streak, which is, not which is not something that happens too often, but you see he's way too late on it and there's no way that he's gonna catch up that's that's in my opinion the best cover for match beat in the game so if you're playing someone who's running match you can hit him with that and it's gonna be a lot of fun for you i got my notes right here and let's talk about something uh that is very important to understand which side of the field do you want to run your bunch to <laughs> the honest answer is it depends i'm gonna come on in z spot 
and I'm gonna show you why it depends. If you wanna throw the corner route versus zone, I recommend running bunch to the short side of the field. What you can do is you, you can just streak uh, Smith Senior. We're just gonna look at the right side of the field, so I'm not gonna change anything backside yet. And you can make the read. Uh, first read is gonna be the tight end, Taysom Hill in the flat. You wanna high point it, which is press L1 while you're throwing a bullet pass and lead it all the way to the outside. Then you're gonna get uh, this nice rack animation every time you see how he kind of doesn't he doesn't slow down that much because if you throw the flat regularly and just throw it uh, without anything this time you see how uh, it's not as good as the uh, over the shoulder thing now if you wait long enough you will see that this corner up is gonna get open it really is it's just that's it it's gonna get open if you run the same thing to the white side of the field let's just say I'm gonna flip the play once this is not going to be open, so I'm going to snap this ball, try to not get sacked to really show you this. You see how there's someone there. So corner routes this time, uh, this year are better to the short side of the field without a, uh, without a shadow of a doubt. You can if you want to run to the wide side, but then you have to motion out the streak, and that's kind of a telltale sign uh, for what's coming. So I just run it like this, make the read right here, take it up the field, and have a lot of fun. So that is the right side of the field of this play. You can basically run this on 95% of people now what do we do with the other uh, 2% 5% rather we're going to run the same thing on the uh, strong side of the formation on the bunch but now we're going to motion out uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin Keith Byers and put him on a streak and put Samuel on the corner out so that we now also have something uh, to look to on that side of the field that's not going to be open all the time as you saw right there it was pretty much bagged but that is the other side of the field. You can, if you want, also have something like this, where you have a flat route on Byers and a deep in on Samuel, and then you just make the read. In this case, I would just check it down, get some yards. That is, excuse me, that is also something you can do. But the main focus on this play is going to be uh, the bunch side because it's just such a such an easy concept. And now, just imagine, just for uh, purpose of showing you this. I'm shading underneath. Now you see how aggressive he is, and that obviously just makes that window even easier to throw. I recommend you having freeform settings on, but I wouldn't freeform that ever. Like, don't freeform it. Just throw it regularly, and it's gonna be a uh, completion. Now just freeform it once to show you what happens. You lead it out of bounds. That's plain and simple. That's just it. But that's it for Z spot. And I want to talk about bunch trail, and this is where it's kind of it kind of depends uh, what you want to do. Or, uh, and then having which side which side of the field you're running this to so i'm going to cover and cover three sky and the point of this is that th for this one we don't want the bunch to the wide side of the field that's i know it's confusing i'm sorry but i'm sorry okay we're going to put our running back on a flat but motion smith senior over streak him put samuel on the corner you see that this this is the same concept that we had just a minute ago and then put harrison on a drag this is very very similar to the setup that I showed yesterday, uh, just because it's a nice concept. You can hit the corner out against the cover three. That's a that's a route that you can throw pretty easily. Uh, let's run the same setup again, and then we can also look uh, to check down. So triangle here or R one here, like both of them are fine. There are nice check down options if the user vacates the middle of the field, which they are likely to do because they're gonna chase one of the check down routes if you throw them often enough. You can look to hit the tight end angle route across the middle, but right there, just simple. It's an easy check it down. If you give the ball to Keith Byers, good things are going to happen. While doing all of this, I really want to emphasize that the main focus, I have some audibles, but the main focus of this formation is going to be to audible uh, over to the thing, then snap the ball as fast as possible, throw it to the open player. Broke all this down yesterday, just want to reiterate that that's a thing. Also, Every once in a while, just throw in a run play. Very simple. Throw in a run play. Uh, that was pretty terrible, but throw in a run play. They're pretty good, especially if your opponent doesn't know what to do and he's scrambling to make his adjustments. And then, ah, I'll just run the ball and try to break one. You see how easy that is? Right there, I did a little bit of a better job uh, reading it. There you go. That is how easy this can get. So now we're back with our same dilemma. We're talking about flood, short side or white side. Short side. For this time, we're gonna go, uh, go short. Short side. This is a pretty nice play uh, for beating cover two. 
but also for beating cover three if we want to, for example. This is for cover three. This is what I recommend for cover two. Backside, we're just going to put Keith Byers on a flat. Sorry, I gotta slow down a little bit. We're going to streak Harrison and put Smith Senior on a corner out. So streak R1, uh, corner out on circle. I'm just gonna uh, switch to Tampa two for the moment. Once again, same concept. If we can see the tight end is open, hit him. Hit him. 10 yards, very simple. If they now, uh, if he's, if the tight end is not open, let's just pretend that he's not open. Okay, tight end is not open, even though he is. Then I look to hit that pass. Of course, if he doesn't drop down, that's a risky pass. I wouldn't recommend throwing that. But as a general rule of thumb, you can definitely hit that. I'll run this same setup against cover three now, and you will see that it's uh, still working. Actually, this is perfectly fine. So just run, just run it always like this. Keep stumbling over my words. But yeah, backside then, very simple. I should have flown the running back. I wanted to see if the square got into a nice little window open up by the running back, but no, it didn't. So, X is open, triangle is open. Check it down. Take it up the field, 10 yards on a simple flat route. And that is how you're gonna get those yards. If you see that the pressure is coming in, to check it down. That's why we have two check downs on both sides of the field. It's right there, I'm gonna free form it. You can also free form it if you want to, but I prefer the high pass because you don't get as many overthrows on those. So, once again, high pass it. There you go. Try to get some extra yards. Very simple. That is it for Flood. Once again, very good versus cover three versus very good versus cover two. Now let's talk about Mesh Post. That's kind of going to be the last play that I'll go over. There are a lot of freestyle things you can do out of this, but freestyling, obviously, if I show you every single freestyle setup that, I don't know, I've kind of stumbled across and ran, uh, we're going to be here forever. Like freestyling, it's about freestyling, as, you, as it says in the, in the name. First setup is going to be very easy. We're going to put Samuel on an out route. We're going to streak R1, uh, streak, slant R1, put our tight end on an out route, motion snap across. This is the setup that we've seen for so many years. It's right there. Just going to throw it to Byers. Make sure to aggressive catch those because it's just better. No chance of anything weird happening. And even though, trust me, you guys, this looks covered. It looks bad. No, it's not. Oops, <laughs> I actually uh, passed let that right into him. That was a very nice thing to say right after, uh, right before it happens. But once again, I'm going to run it like this. Snap the ball. Okay, triangle's open. Throw it to him. Take it up the field. That's just the first read, though. Second read of this play is going to be the slant. And if you get time, if someone's not blitzing, you can also look to hit. Uh, I'll just throw the slant right here. And make sure that uh, make sure that we're keeping in mind that this is all about confusing the user because we're doing so many different things. Last time Harrison was on a streak and we had Samuel on the corner out. This time, completely different play. Right there, just pass lead that down, aggressive catch it. I, I don't free form that. I just pass lead it down all the way. So left stick down all the way and aggressive catch it, just to make sure uh, that we get away from that safety. But once again, in this case, throw it to Keith Byers. Very simple. If that doesn't get user. The nice thing about this is that you can make a quick throw on this in a lot of areas of the field. And in one of those areas, the user is not going to be there. So you want to make you want to do your best to throw it away from the users right there. I can just hit that out for a couple of yards if I really want to. Now, is that the best thing you can do? No, in my opinion, not. If you wait longer, then you're going to have more things open. But you always have to have that timer in your head uh, to get rid of the ball in time because sheds are kind of wild especially before if, if you have a four-man rush you're playing someone in big nickel or nickel good luck i just keep that timer in your head but don't feel rushed now that is one of the setups let's now talk about uh something uh else actually it's a very similar setup like uh, went back to play call menu this time we're going to motion over harrison Going to put square on this C run, then streak Harrison, and put uh, Taysom Hill on an in route. That's it. Now we're going to wait. This time we're explicitly looking to hit the post or hit the corner route on the left. This is more kind of our, our uh, bigger yardage play. This is what we're kind of going towards if we need some yards. Let's say that we're at third and 15 or something, then we can look to hit 
uh, that corner out to Debo Samuel. I don't know, Debo just really is not uh, seeming to get his feet in a lot of the time. Uh, maybe that's a problem. Maybe I have to change him. I'll just try to not pass lead, it, pass lead it this time. If I don't pass lead it, then it doesn't get there. Okay. Um, but this is my second setup for... This is my second setup for Mesh Post. Once again, just like so. Main focus of this play is going to be to hit the post, just like so. I wonder whether uh, or not I can spice this up a little bit. So, for example, let's have something like... I can't put him on an angle route, huh? Let's just keep putting him on a, on this in route. Now, if I want to have an extra route over there, I can also look to put uh, buyers on a flat. That's also an option that I have, and I kind of recommend uh, this a little bit more. Now that I think about it, uh, this should be the setup that you go for. If you want, you can put Taysom Hill on the slant, but I recommend putting him on an in route just like so. And the thing about this, these plays is that you also want to have the ability to beat man cover. So cover one hole, for example, if I'm on the exact same uh, play that I just showed you, just like so, you will see that we have a lot of opportunities to get people open. So for example, in route is open, post is open, C route is open. Um, that was kind of not the best example of the C route being open, but we all know that Z routes beat man cover. So I feel like you kind of get the the gist of what I'm going for. We always want to have the ability to have a couple of man beating routes on the field. So, oh, they surprised me, it's man coverage. Guess what, I still have my post to Smith Senior. Very simple, very good. But yeah, that is it uh, for the mesh post. Now let's talk about how to beat uh, coverages for one play touchdown. I want to talk about cover three and cover four drop now. Cover four match I already showed you. For this one, we're going to max protect this blocks are running back. Then we're going to put square on the comeback round. Streak R1. And with Hilly, we can do whatever we want. If we want to get creative, oops, I just motioned the wrong guy. If we want to get creative, we can motion him across the formation, have him be on a drag, just like so. Then motion him across the formation just to really confuse the uh, opponent. With him, we, he's kind of a wild card. We can do whatever we want to confuse. Oops, that was pretty bad. I don't know why that uh, just didn't get open. Very confusing. Snap the ball again. Good time, good time, good time. It, it feels like they're matching me a little bit. I'll just keep it contained to make sure uh, that I get enough. Oops, that I get enough time to get these routes open. Huh, this is really weird. I don't know why they're uh, kind of playing this so well. Usually this should not be, this should not be happening be contained to make sure I get enough time in the pocket yeah I mean this really is not looking great I don't know why this usually works pretty well just trust me that this is something that you can go to versus cover three it really feels like they're not biting down on the on the thing as much cover four drop contain mesh spot uh, mesh post and the beautiful thing about this is that we just run this exact same play like the exact same play Cover four can be pretty tricky to beat, uh, but there you go. Now you see how this worked perfectly. This is kind of helped if he gets bumped a little bit where he takes a little longer to get to a spot. So for example, let's watch him. Let's see if he gets bumped. This time it's a free release. Oh no, he actually gets bumped. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. If he gets there too soon, then the safety is gonna see him and he's gonna react to him a little bit better, but it's still gonna be open. So this is my cover four beater that I recommend you go to. Snap the ball again. Time, we have time. I don't know why it's playing really weird because uh, when I labbed all this up, it did a better job against, uh, the cover four did a better job of covering it than the cover three. But now the cover four is doing a worse job but the cover three is all of a sudden playing it. It's, the inconsistencies in this game are uh, nice. Let's try a cover three out of dollar because it tested it is out of or against the cover three by sky half dollar so snap the ball try to not get shedded not get shed okay it, it feels like it's playing it just uh, unreasonably well usually the comeback or not usually every single time that i've tested this the comeback does a uh, pretty bad a uh, pretty good job of keeping it down i'm gonna put a, a corner post there or a post corner there snap the ball this should now 
I don't know. Listen, guys, I don't know what to tell you. It, it feels like it's not working, even though it should uh, be. But that's fine. That's going to happen sometimes. You know, sometimes when you record a video, you get lucky. And sometimes you just get bent over because the game does one thing before you record. Then you hit record and then stuff is not working. That was working so easily before. Go play Julius Peppers. Okay, but that's it for Mesh Post. I can't tell you guys this enough, but run the ball. Like, please run the ball. It's so simple. Such a nice thing. Such a good change of pace. Also, audible tight slots and then run the ball from there. So, snap the ball. Just spam it. Spam it. And then snap the ball as fast as possible. There you go. Inside zone. We fall forward because, uh, because Keith Byers is a beast. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm going to add all of those plays and the specific motions into the ebook. Uh, check out the link down below. It's right there. You can see me. I have it printed out. I wanted to print it on one page to save paper. But the nice thing uh, about Word is sometimes uh, about Microsoft Office is that it sometimes doesn't do what you want to do. Appreciate the support, you guys. Please share this with a, vi uh, with a friend who needs some offense in their life, who can't move the ball on you at all. Also, let them know that they suck. If they can't move the ball this year, which is me from time to time I play someone good, but most of the time I can move the ball pretty well. Tell them that they suck. From me. Maybe not, because I want them to like me. So they subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe as well. Till next time, peace out.